because he f***ed with the wrong girl. Hi everyone, welcome back to Touchy Subject. My name is Lena the Plug and today I'm here with a very special friend. But before we start the podcast, I just want to acknowledge that there is construction going on outside and we are not sure if it's going to pick up in the audio and if it does we are so so sorry please still give us five stars in the (laughs) app that you're listening to and like and subscribe and comment and whatever okay anyway so for today we have my friend Brittany Balin I am so excited to be having a conversation with her on camera because I actually have gone on a lot of mom dates with you but I Mm -hmm. don't know all that much about you And I feel like every single time we've hung up for this, we had our kids with us. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of very interrupted conversations. Yeah, in mom mode. Yeah, fragmented. Talk so so much. And like, we're like, yes, I'm just like, you know, grabbing Mm -hmm. hands and And then share your toys. Toddler runs off. And then, yeah. Exactly. So I found out about you because I was pregnant at the same time as you. And that's when I was doing a lot of my YouTube research. Okay, mm-hmm. what should I be buying Parker? What should I be expecting in the first trimester, etc.? And so that's how I found you. And then I followed you on Instagram and you followed me back. And now we're here. Mm-hmm. We've gone on mom play dates and been to each other's kids' birthday parties. Mm-hmm. And now you're here doing your first podcast with me. So I'm yeah, really excited. I'm so excited to be here. I will say that I did see you looking at my stories before you announced <gasps> your pregnancy. Oh, so you knew? So I knew. I This happens like every once in a while, you know, like when you look at stories, people who are verified yeah. at the top. And I went to your page and I was like, this girl is pregnant. I'm not going to say anything. And so I was waiting for you to announce. And then we like kind of chatted here and there. Oh, my God. That's but so funny. Because I, I know. <laughs> I saw you make a TikTok that said like something yeah. about that. Like, oh, when influencers are looking at my story. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, I wonder who's pregnant. I didn't realize that like I was also one of yeah, those you were, people. Yeah, you were one of them. There's been probably three that have like come out after. And so I don't know if some people just look at me and they're like, you know, maybe planning or just yeah. seeing. But- I mean, you make really, really good content for moms like at at all stages so like through your pregnancy you Mm -hmm. gave very very detailed accounts of what it was like being pregnant for you and then through the postpartum and then through your breastfeeding journey your weaning like everything has been laid out Mm -hmm. um and I find you very inspiring because I am like the most inconsistent YouTuber who has ever existed and you are kind of like the most (laughs) consistent uploader I've ever seen and I just don't know how you have that much creativity to keep coming up with stuff every single week. I don't know. I, I think it, I think it's pretty cool. I feel like when you are pregnant and going into motherhood, like there's so much information. There's mm-hmm. so many questions you have. You have so much fear. And so I kind of just come up with my content like based off that, like questions I have and looking yeah. for answers. And that's kind of like what pushed me to like make so much content because I wanted that kind of content for me. And so I knew there was going to be other people out there that yeah. wanted that, that wanted like the real and kind of like to not feel alone because it can be really lonely to be pregnant, even though like you're with another human. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, and I was, I think I learned a lot. I bought a lot of things that you recommended. <laughs> even now when I'm looking at your Instagram story, I'm like, oh, this is the sippy cup she uses. She, she must know this is the good one. <laughs> Swipe up, purchased. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to talk about mom and mom stuff with you a bunch, but I want to actually start with like the beginning because mm-hmm. I think we're the same age and we've been living in similar places because I was living in Santa Cruz and I went to college there, Mm -hmm. but you grew up nearby there. And then, you know, I grew up in LA and then you came to LA and like, we were like kind of like, you know, doing this sort of switching lives thing. When did you come to LA? I, well, I I grew up in LA and then I went to Santa Cruz in 2009. Yeah. And that's probably around around the time that you were coming down here. I came here in 2010. Okay. Okay. But so you grew up up there. Mm-hmm. in Aptos you said yeah Aptos. Aptos I kind of bounced around here and there and okay. I actually like did my final years in Saratoga which is more okay. like Silicon Valley yeah I know where that is yeah I love that I know the area I'm like <laughs> I don't know a lot of areas of the world but I know that yeah, area. yeah usually no one knows Saratoga yeah I know where that is so the other thing that's interesting is that you were clearly like on social media mm-hmm. around that time and I was such a late bloomer with social media I didn't Like, I had MySpace and Facebook and whatever, but Mm -hmm. by the time that I went to college, those apps had kind of died out in a way, and I just didn't pursue whatever the next thing was. I didn't have Twitter till like, five years ago. So I'm fascinated by you as someone who was just doing it 
From yeah, the I mean, I got into it when I was 17. It was probably like Still 2008, 2009. Yeah. So like fresh YouTube. There was no monetization. There was uh-huh. no sponsorship, brand deals. It was like just really people like having a webcam and talking about makeup or talking. There's no editing. And uh, I kind of like felt lost in high school and mm-hmm. I wanted to find kind of a community of what I was into at that moment. Mm-hmm. And And what were you into in high school? Makeup, makeup, fashion, fashion. And yeah, I feel like there's not a lot of makeup and fashion going on in uh, at least from what I experienced in Santa Cruz. No, no, no. <laughs> it was very like much a hippie town, yeah. surfer town. Like class would be canceled because the waves were good. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you, do you, so do you start uploading right away even though you can't make any money? I I mean I was uploading just like here and there here whenever and there. I liked it and then when I moved to LA I was going to a community college here trying to figure out what I wanted to do still doing my YouTube and someone actually commented and was like hey you know you can monetize your content and so I was like okay I'm gonna try to do this part time I was like also working at a sushi restaurant going to school trying to figure everything out mm-hmm. and it came to a point of like three years in I was like I I need to dedicate all of my time to this mm-hmm. and see how far I can take it and then I kind of just went full-blown with it and that would have been maybe 2014 was the creator program live by then yes you could so you could yes okay. so you could monetize Sorry, you just said stuff. that okay but I want to know what your first YouTube video was do you remember what you put out <laughs> so you used to on YouTube be able to respond to someone else's video with a video like like a and duet like almost like a duet like okay. it would live so th- it would be their video and then the replies that were videos would be on the bottom so you okay. could get seen that way and oh. so there was a youtuber julie G- julie g13 and she did like nail art and i copied her nail art and it's like a webcam video maybe 20 seconds and that was my first oh my god video. i didn't realize this this version of youtube was existed at some yeah, point yeah it was fun it was like very community based like i almost wish they would bring it back i'm surprised that they haven't tried to bring it back since you can clearly you know do the same thing on mm-hmm. other platforms wow yeah so, youtube you should do it yeah <laughs> okay so you were doing nail art I was doing like nail art, kind of, and then I was doing more hauls were really big back Mm -hmm. then, Uh, kind of like recreating celebrity looks was really big, and then I got really into like different hair colors, and I was able to work with like a bunch of different hair brands, and like that was mostly my vibe, and then I would say for like a couple years, I I didn't like where the beauty community was going. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like a safe community that it was years ago. It was much much different and so I knew I want to do something else but not quite and then when I got pregnant that's where my new obsession went and Your new that's inspiration. my new drive and yeah I just kind of ran with it because that was what I was so passionate about that time yeah. and it, the more pregnant I got and then the more I got into like postpartum and motherhood mm-hmm. I realized how many other people were looking for that yeah. and they wanted help and they wanted a community and I feel like the community I had missed I have found in like the motherhood community yeah like the people that watch the people that support are such good people yeah your your audience is very very supportive mm-hmm. and I, I I feel like they all really appreciate the information that you provide for them and they probably because you provide so much information are asking you so many more questions mm-hmm. than they used to like and because I get a little bit of that and I don't even feel like I really educate people that much but it's like they kind of think that like you're all knowing and you must have yeah. the answer I mean I'm definitely not all knowing you I just definitely... go and figure it out <laughs> yeah I, I no. go I go and figure it out and I feel lucky that I'm able to work as a mom and my work is like mm-hmm. researching motherhood and yeah. so it kind of like coincides and it's really brought me a lot of happiness and peace and community mm-hmm. to be in this certain part of youtube because i don't know if i would have been able to make it so such a positive experience if i wasn't able to document my journey and share it with these people Mm -hmm. because as much as i give advice and support i get that advice and support back because i'm always asking my viewers like for their advice yeah because i feel like we're all on this together no yeah i see you like kind of poll your audience a lot Mm -hmm. like do you guys want this do you guys want this 
and you're you're making it for yourself but you are also making it for your audience which is really mm-hmm. cool back when you were doing like the fashion and the makeup stuff like what was like, your first big video where you were like okay oh shit this is blowing up my first big video was actually when i dyed my hair purple this was like back <laughs> in like 2014 when okay. like the colored hair was just starting uh-huh um and that was like my first one to get like over a million views and it was just like the whole process it kind of like launched my passion into like exploring different hair colors yeah. and working with different hair brands and you've always been so bold and like <laughs> trying different stuff i'm so basic i'm like okay i i know that this is the only hair color that will actually look really nice on me and i'm just gonna keep have it you this not way. done another hair color i have like in high school i had like crayon red hair but i definitely wouldn't say it's like my best look and mm-hmm. uh, i remember i went I, I was like really interested in the idea of being blonde because mm-hmm. All of my aunts have your hair color, okay? And and they really? all must share similar features to me and similar mm-hmm. skin tone to me. So I'm like, they look good. Like, I'll probably look good too. And I remember I went to, what's the Be- Bellamy hair? Mm-hmm. Place. Mm-hmm. I went to that place in Beverly Hills and was like trying on hair and wigs with my cousin. And the girl that, that worked there was just like, honestly, sweetie, it's not for you. Really? She was like, really? I'm not going to lie to you and try to sell you hair. Like, you're just meant to be a brunette. And I was like, I mean, I thank appreciate you. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, but, like, the honesty. But, I know. like, you know, maybe, like, maybe one day. I don't, I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to look really washed out. But it looks really good on you. And all the hair <laughs> colors that I've seen you try all have looked really good on you. So I'm sort of, like, envious in a way because I just know that I <laughs> could not do that. But I... I was scrolling all the way back in your mm-hmm. Instagram to 10 years ago. And I was like, holy shit, she's done so many different things yeah. to her hair. That must be so fun. Do you find that like you decide to change your hair in like different phases of your life? Like if you're going through something yeah, emotionally? I feel, I feel like, yeah, it's like a piece of almost like how you're feeling mentally, like mm-hmm. the same way, like how you dress. Like if I feel down, I wear like neutrals. If mm-hmm. I feel happy, I wear color. Okay, uh, you're very happy today. Yes, like I'm it. happy today. I like it. <laughs> That's cool. So no black hair for you, though. Never had a black hair face. So you couldn't have been that. I sad. did like dark, dark brown. Dark, dark brown. OK. Um, OK, so now you're doing the mom stuff. And do you feel mm-hmm. like you've blown up more because you're doing the mom stuff? Because there's so many moms out there. Yes, I feel like more so the people who are following me are more of a community. Like I, I feel like. It hasn't like you know blown up more maybe per se but the 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 love is stronger Mm -hmm. and like the the consistency is there yeah so did you know because i know you since i've been following you which is probably almost two years now or maybe more than that um you upload once a week like you Mm -hmm. almost never miss what you weren't like that before before no no oh okay i wasn't i well i would try yeah but i would say like the two years leading up to my pregnancy I like I said I was kind of like lost in the beauty community I didn't know where I fit in I knew it was going in a different direction and it didn't feel authentic to me and so I was having trouble coming up with content that like the stuff I did like didn't perform well Mm -hmm. and then the stuff I didn't like making did well and I was like I don't know if I want to make content that I don't love even if it's just getting views and so now that like I'm so passionate about motherhood that it's just been easy to at this point I'm hopefully not gonna run out of ideas yeah. soon to just come up with I feel like content. it'd be really hard to come up with that to stop coming up with ideas because mm-hmm. so much is changing especially yes. when they're younger I was thinking about the question of is it easier when they're newborns or is it easier when they're toddlers and it's just like you know, certain things are easier when they're newborns mm-hmm. and certain things are easier when they're toddlers. Yeah. But it's all hard for all different reasons. Yeah. And so there's just so many different layers and variables and things that you could be talking yes. about. It's always changing. And I remember calling my mom when my daughter was a newborn and being like, can you just give me a time frame of when this gets easier? Yeah. And she was like, to be honest, it doesn't get easier it just gets different yeah so some things will be easier but some things will be harder and now that I have a two-year-old it's very true Mm -hmm. things have I I get sleep now but now my time awake is go 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 yeah you don't really get any true true no breaks no oh my goodness I know (laughs) because Parker's almost two Mm -hmm. and I'm like okay well 
how far apart do I want my kids to be? Mm -hmm. But then my sister just had a newborn and she is like not allowed to put him down. I mean, I tried to nurse him and tried to help her have like a break when she was at my house the other day. Yeah. And he would latch for like a second, but he he wanted her. And Mm -hmm. so like I couldn't give her a single break. And I'm like, I don't know if I want a child like a attached to me yeah. right this second yeah. but but you'll never be ready for that again right yeah I mean, I mean you never really know too because every baby and newborn is so different yeah. and so you might get one that is like that and you might get one that is chill and it's like <sighs> I never, you never know. I don't know. I feel like babies have no chill. Kids have no chill. Yeah, they have no chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. It's true. Definitely. <laughs> Do you feel like when Parker was one, you noticed like a big change like right around her birthday because I do with my daughter and then at her second birthday another big change what was the big change at one at one it was like very like physical like she all of a sudden could start like walking and climbing Uh and just like much more active uh with two it's much more mental it Mm -hmm. you know definitely like learning about the world world her emotions uh her independence that Mm -hmm. she has control over stuff that happens yeah uh and it's just it's always right around the birthday that it just like i'll have to look out for that on her second birthday because the night before her first birthday was actually the first time that she walked by herself where she like let Mm -hmm. go and took a few steps and then the next day which was her birthday birthday and it was her party she had like a really new social smile, which was kind of like smiling with the eyes that she mm-hmm. was doing to everybody. And we were like, what is happening here? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Yeah. She had previously been like very nervous around other people, but I'll have to look out around too. I just feel like every day I'm dealing with like a new version of her mm-hmm. and it makes me not want to leave. It just gives me more mom guilt because I'm like, what am I going to miss out on? Yeah. So before you had Arrow, like what were your thoughts about motherhood? Did you always know you wanted to be a mom? So no, actually. I had, I remember being young and my mom asking me like, oh, do you see yourself having kids? And uh-huh. I said, no. Like I. You always thought, said that from when it, you were Yeah, younger. it was mostly like childbirth related, like medical things really Fear scare around me. around that, okay. Um, and then as I got older it just you know it like I never really thought it like about a wedding or like a baby or anything and then in my marriage we were you know talking more seriously and my husband at the time was a little bit more older and once he hit 30 he was like I want to have kids and I said okay give me a little time and I'll think about how I feel about it and I think from that conversation you guys didn't have that conversation before you guys got married I mean, we did. It was more loose. Like, okay. oh, one day we'll have kids. Okay, okay. But he was like, I'm ready now. Like, I want to be a dad. Oh, I want to be a dad. And I was like, well, okay. Um, did he I, have, like, nieces or nephews that made him, like, really want kids? Or I don't know. I, it really was just, like, 30. And suddenly he was like, I'm ready to live, like, not for myself. Like, I want... Interesting. I want to okay. be a dad. I don't want to be an old old dad. Yeah. Um, And I think it was probably like a year of us having conversations and then I was like okay we can start trying and I have endometriosis Mm -hmm. which makes it difficult to conceive not for everyone and so I didn't know if it was going to be difficult for me or not so we did try for like four or five months and then I did end up getting pregnant and it was probably like the second I got the positive test I knew I want to be a mom. I want to do wow. everything okay. I can to protect her. I want to do everything I can to... Once it became real. Yeah, once it became real, that was like, I, I like I really want this. Like, I knew, yeah. obviously, trying that mm-hmm. I wanted it, but it really hit me differently. And I know it might be different for everyone. Yeah. Like, obviously, I had, like, a lot of fear and, like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And do I call a doctor? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like, okay, you get the test and then what's next? Mm-hmm. I had already been given like an OB recommendation like years before I was even thinking about getting pregnant. So I just like fished it out from somewhere. I was like, I guess I'll call this guy. Mm-hmm. But we were both pregnant during the pandemic. So yes. that definitely added new obstacles for us yeah. to go through. At what point in your pregnancy did the pandemic hit? I found out I was pregnant um, like February 7. And I... Uh, told Adam on Valentine's Day and then the pandemic where we weren't allowed to leave was like literally like a month later yeah wow so my entire pregnancy was the pandemic so I think I went to like my first doctor's appointment where they check if there's a heartbeat and if the pregnancy is viable and all that with Adam and then after that he was not allowed to come wow yeah did you get to go with Cody yeah because well I was 
I think 20 weeks or 21 weeks pregnant by the time lockdown hit and so we were able to do a lot of the appointments together but I do feel like having a baby in the pandemic definitely changed a lot of things like I was going to do mommy me classes and a yeah. lot class and a lot of things to not only prepare myself but to prepare him and yeah. I feel like there was definitely a big hardship on probably fathers throughout this experience mm-hmm. because you know not they only were are they out not from the beginning. Like carrying the baby but they're not yeah. there for the appointments and so I feel like it can make it less of a reality for them mm-hmm. where they can feel like they're not a part of the experience. Yeah, I didn't really ever think about that because Adam was so down to not come to the appointment. <laughs> he wanted to come see like the main ultrasounds and stuff, which like they gave us some permissions for those things. But he was like, oh, I don't have to come to the doctor. That's cool. Does he hate doctors or he just... Uh, he hates taking time off work for like a like a one hour appointment in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. And like if I could, you know, put it at the beginning or the end of the day, he would probably be happier. But I eventually got a midwife and she would come to the house anyways for mm-hmm. a lot of our appointments. Um, but oh, I was gonna ask you something. What was it? Oh, like what was your pregnancy actually like? I mean, it was it had difficult moments, but and I know every pregnancy is different. Uh-huh. But for some reason, I had never felt like more happy, okay. mentally stable, yeah. at peace, like motivated, me. motivated. Okay, like I I don't I don't know what it was. Like I I almost like envy my mindset. Of you pregnancy, want it back. yeah. yeah I, I don't. It it was really good, and I, I want someone to make an SSRI that is that exactly is, yeah. the pregnancy and just give it to us and make sure there's no side effects. And I feel bad saying that because I know pregnancy can be the total opposite for some people. Yeah, I know. And I feel like they they say like either you love pregnancy or you love like your birth. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't. I personally did not love, love my birth. birth. Yeah, I saw your video and I remember being like, I just. I just think there must have been something seriously wrong and they didn't take me seriously because I don't think my birth experience was normal. I don't think my epidural worked at all. I don't... Yeah, describe your labor because I I watched your video, so I remember, but like what was it that happened? Well, it was very upsetting for a couple reasons because my OBGYN said that my daughter was eight pounds maybe um, and I said, I think she's bigger I don't know why I just had like intuition and my due date had passed and I was like I I don't want to be induced but I'm concerned that the baby's too big for me I'm small framed Mm -hmm. and you know I I don't want to do anything to harm the baby but I'm worried that I won't be able to push the baby out so how far past your due date were you because I feel like two weeks Oh, and they hadn't suggested induction before that? No. And That's so weird. I feel like most OBs suggest it like the day yes, of I, the I have due a date. little bit of beef with my OB because she just really didn't take me seriously because I feel like if she had listened to me at like the actual due date, I think she would have been at a really like great time to be delivered mm-hmm. and I would have had probably a lot more of a peaceful delivery because mm-hmm. pushing an almost 10-pound baby out of me yeah. was – very traumatic extremely traumatic yeah i mean you are like one of the smallest people i've ever met ever and uh, that is a very very big baby i do think that your body is capable of yes delivering the baby that is in your uterus but i also think it's just so weird because i like i was more than two weeks overdue Mm -hmm. and i just ended up having to go to the hospital and attempt to be induced and they the doctors and the nurses were looking at me like i was a fucking alien like who is this person that is so pregnant? We don't allow these people to exist in our practice. If you are even a couple days past your due date, we are like coming. Oh, really? I didn't get any of that. That is so weird. I'm surprised. So you tried to be induced and then you did do a C-section. I did a C-section because they tried to induce me with just like the old school method of putting like a balloon and a catheter up you and it's supposed to like, I don't know how the fuck it works. but Is that like a stretch and sweep? No. May, they they did like a million of those on me and it okay. didn't do anything but they tried to induce me with a balloon and I guess you know they have you hooked up to the monitor until they could see the fetal heart rate mm-hmm. and they they kept saying I was having really long like seven minute contractions and but she was I couldn't feel any of it and they were saying hmm. that she her heart rate was dropping and all that so they didn't even want to try to induce me with the Pitocin so yeah. then I had to do the C-section but I didn't prepare for any of that. I wish I had prepared mentally for the idea of okay. going to the hospital and having a C-section. Because mm-hmm. when I was there, I was just like completely frazzled. 
Yeah. But you, even though you had prepared to be in the hospital, you still didn't necessarily have a good experience. Yeah. No, I, I, I almost think a C-section probably would have been a better option. It wasn't something that I asked for or that they even offered at the time. But I got to the point where, like, I, I watch people's birth videos and they're pushing for, like, I don't know, 30 minutes and they don't seem, like, in constant pain and distress. Mm-hmm. I legitimately had her crowning and I could feel her head for three hours. And I was like, oh my, is she going to, like, suffocate my face? Yeah. And <laughs> and I'm just like... And you feel like your epidural's not working. And I, I not working. Like, I could feel every sensation and... I just, I don't know. I, I, and I got three different epidurals. Wow. Like, I don't know what was going on. Uh-huh. Um, and just, like, the fear of, like, having her be right there. And I'm like, I don't know if she's going to come out. Like, I feel like, yeah. I, in my be- head, I was like, is there, like, an option to push her back in and we can do a <laughs> C-section? Like, I just, like, it was, like, bone pushing against bone. I'd be panicking, honestly. I'd be like, is this shit going to tear open? And, like, like every uh, time that I push, they're like, this is the one. This is the one. And when you hear that for, like, 100 pushes for three hours, and you're, like, <gasps> like so delirious. Yeah, and it, weak, and they probably don't feed you anything. No, you can't eat. And I, I think it was, like, in total, like, 16 hours oh of like God. not eating and like and labor. finally the final push there was one that worked yeah where, like, there was they didn't have to use anything to pull no yes thankfully no they were gonna what a episiotomy they were gonna cut me and she put the blade to me and i felt i remember exactly what a blade and i said no <laughs> no 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 yes. no, no. Oh my and God. i was like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna rip myself and so i could feel the ripping <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember that line from your vlog and just being so afraid because you had Arrow a few months before I had Parker and you're like I, I feel it I feel I know, it and I, I'm like I didn't want to like <gasps> traumatize people no but it's real it's watching. a real story yeah, yeah. and um, Jesus it's just like it's kind of a blur now but yeah. and as bad as it was I definitely want to have another kid yeah. but I don't know I wish my OB would have listened to me and mm-hmm. induced me earlier yeah so at you it sucks that you had someone who wasn't on board with you but so you would have advocated for yourself a little more but it's just mm-hmm. so weird because in that situation there's a power dynamic like they are the doctor yeah and you are the patient yeah they want one thing and you want another thing i mean my ob he was like i, I was so anti-c-section and he was suggest not suggesting a c-section at three months but he was just like oh in the event of a c-section we'll have to give you this drug because you also have this issue and whatever and i was just like don't even talk about that yeah you know so it's so strange to me that they had not presented that to you earlier i feel like it's an option that they lay out for so many patients yeah ones who don't need it so that's crazy so how long do you did you have to recover from that because that must have been really hard on your body uh i mean i would say i was like bleeding or leaking fluids for probably like two months and it was probably four months until i could sit (laughs) oh my god like it was like i would sit but it it if you're pregnant turn this off (laughs) i'm sorry (laughs) but um which i also don't think is normal like it's not a normal experience for people um so i was sitting on like you know like my breastfeeding pillow the my breast friend is like a little donut and i just you know kept thinking like is this what other people are going through? And like, why aren't people talking about this? And I I feel like that pushed me more to make content that was real and that shared my story, even though it probably differs from other people's stories, Mm -hmm. just to say like, there is a whole wide range of what is normal for pregnancy. I know. I hate when I'm watching a labor vlog and she's like, oh wait the baby's out oh cool i did it and she like looks beautiful she did her makeup and showed up and i'm like what i know no, i am a little not envious real. when i see like a pleasant birth experience because i just remember like i i tried putting on makeup for my birth because i was like oh i'm gonna take a photo no i was sweating like all grease just like, oh <laughs> so gosh. it was gnarly i wonder why the epidural didn't work like, I wonder if you got pregnant again and if they were supposed to give you an epidural, if it will work or if you're just somehow immune. To I don't know. I do think it got rid of my back labor. Okay. But I still felt my contractions, which I think is still normal. My big thing is that I felt all like all the ripping, all the cutting. Uh, and they say that you feel the pressure, which is good and normal. But I don't think the pressure that I was feeling was good and normal because it was like 
a bowling ball shattering my pelvic bone. Wow. Just over and over. <laughs> Sounds worse and worse and worse. I am like hoping that I can have a V-back, but maybe I can just have another C-section. No, 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 no. <laughs> because you could have like that glamorous where you're like, push we'll right see. out. I mean, I tried everything to I drank I sat home and drank castor oil to go into labor Mm. and my midwife was like you're the only person I know who this didn't work for so really yeah um I was having contractions out of my backside and I had to uh have out of a Vaseline on my butthole by the end of the day because it was burning so bad from going to the bathroom it was awful but anyways that does not sound nice I'm so sorry (laughs) but so like you have this really, really difficult labor and then you have to go right into, into being a mom. Yes. Like how How was that? How did you do that? Uh, honestly, I don't know how. I don't know how anyone does it because whether I feel like you do a vaginal birth or you do a C- C-section, there's so much recovery that it's just kind of like, like people don't talk about it. They're just yeah. kind of like overlooked. And it's, it's, it's severe. It's like you were in a major car accident yeah. and you have a bunch of hormones, all this mental changes did you get really bad postpartum i it's weird i didn't at like the t- i feel like i got late onset postpartum depression mm-hmm. but i did get baby blues okay really bad uh did you get baby blues oh yeah big time. yeah it was it was weird it was almost like clockwork it was it happened about three days postpartum and there would be like twice a day usually at like 4 p.m we're just waterworks yeah i water had that works. too same time every day just and, wanted to cry yeah. yeah and everyone's like what's wrong and i'm like i don't know <laughs> Oh, everything's wrong it's just, it's it's just, just hormones sad. and you're tired and you're you know hurting really bad and you're you know and you're constantly needed yeah you're constantly needed by you're, human and you can't sleep yeah and you don't quite know what to do but you're trying to do your best and you're trying to do it on no sleep and did you find yourself up googling like every possible question you could think of yeah yes yes like is this normal should she be doing this like yes yeah i i was also the kind of person that called my ob and being like okay this is happening is this supposed to happen and uh am i so st- still be wearing a diaper three months later like yeah <laughs> and even just with like the baby because we both both breastfed so i was constantly worried like is she actually drinking milk is this like phantom sucking mm-hmm. like is this is this working i don't i just had never I'd been around a lot of other kids, but yeah. not really had a lot of experiences with fresh, fresh newborns. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very different. Um, I did. Did you go to a lactation consultant? Because I ended up going to one, and we did like she sat me down, told me to not feed her before I came, and then I did like a feeding with one boob. She would lay her down, mm-hmm. and a feeding with the other boob, and like lay her down, and we could actually see like how much she was consuming, and so that gave me some kind of peace yeah. of mind. Um, but yeah, it is stressful breastfeeding because you, you're like, is it working? Is it not working? Yeah. And is you it- ended up having a lot of issues because Arrow was having trouble with things that were, you were eating in your diet, right? Yeah. So then you yeah. had to cut So she ended up, uh, within the first year being allergic to dairy. So I had to cut dairy out of my diet completely. Um, a lot of people were asking how, I, I don't really talk about this, but uh, a lot of people are asking how I discovered that. And um, if you are concerned, always go to your doctor. But it was like more than just a rash. It was like blood. Oh, in her stool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah, because I didn't know how you how you knew. I thought. Yeah. Maybe. So like if that does happen, you take that diaper into the pediatrician and they can test the, the stool. Oh, wow. So was it just dairy or was it other stuff too? It was just just dairy. And then now she's no longer allergic yeah, to it. Yeah, now she she's fine. She grew out of it. She went to her allergist at a year, tested for everything, and she has no allergies. Wow, that's... And they said that's common, actually. Yeah, I had, and I, I feel like maybe it is common, but I had never heard of it until I watched you. But now yeah. I know what to look for, which is why it's great that you document your pregnancy and yeah. everything that's going on, and you put it out there. Um, I wish I watched more postpartum footage when yeah. I was still pregnant because... The, I mean, I knew about postpartum depression. I didn't really know about, like, crying at the same time every mm-hmm. single day as if I had been coming down from drugs or something. It is like a drug come down. It is so much like a drug come mm-hmm. down because it's, like, this unexplainable just sadness mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense. You yeah. just have, like, a plain face. You can't smile. Mm-hmm. That was one thing that I wasn't really aware of, the degree of it. Mm-hmm. And then the postpartum sweats were just the yeah. smell and the sweats. Yes, yes. Disgusting. Which is like a biological thing. So your baby can know your scent and kind of bond with you. But it's, it's nasty. It's, it's nasty. It, it's my least favorite <laughs> postpartum yeah. feature. Yeah. I, I 
feel like the I uh, forgot about that actually. I haven't forgotten about it because I feel like now every time I'm getting my period, I sweat the way I sweated with postpartum. Interesting. Yeah, it's like a few days and that's kind of how I know. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm totally getting my period. I still get night sweats. Yeah, it's at night for me. Okay. So you do so, get it yeah, around I your period. Still do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't sweat like throughout the day. I just like when I go to mm-hmm. sleep, I'm like wake up soaking wet. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my whole life, all my aunties and everything said that things will change after you had kids. And I just ignored them, ignored them, ignored mm-hmm. them. And now I'm like, those fuckers were right. Yeah. Yeah, they were right. Okay, so now that we've scared Monica all about uh, labor so and, and pregnancy, <laughs> she's still going to have a baby one day. It's okay. Yeah. She'll be fine. It is worth it. Like, yes, absolutely. We both want another kid, and yeah. we've been through it. So, yes. But would you do vaginal again, or would you do a C-section? Yeah, I would, but I, I, I think I would know to stand up for myself to my OB mm-hmm. and, you know, let her know, like, hey, like, I tend to have bigger babies, and I, I know my body pretty well, and I think you should listen to me. I wonder if you would have a really quick second labor. My sister had a really long first labor. And the second one, I like went to bed and texted her like, good luck. And woke mm-hmm. up in the morning like a few hours later. And she was like, I'm home. I'm I home. do hear that. So yeah. that does bring me hope. But, but who you knows? Never know. you, ne- you never know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you had Arrow. And mm-hmm. then a few months into Arrow's life, things were already kind of rough for you with postpartum. And yes. then you and your husband decided to separate. Yes. Yes. I think about this often. I thought about it a lot when I saw it on social media because I was also with a newborn and Mm -hmm. questioning my relationship a lot. It's Mm -hmm. it's a very testy time for a relationship. Definitely. And I was doing the bulk of -hmm. the work and I was kind of like, I can do that. I can get rid of Adam. It's easy. (laughs) Look at Brittany do it. But I know it's not easy. I know it was probably very hard and... um, yeah trying to take care of yourself while also having to take care of a newborn like how did you process all of that how did you handle it in a lot of ways it's again a blur I don't quite know how I did it but I I, I don't want to like it is a very difficult time in the newborn stage and um, I'm not saying you know separation divorce is for everyone it was definitely like a long time coming Mm -hmm. type thing and we both knew it and when we got to the point that we knew it was like you know better for us to be apart yeah better we could be better parents apart than together which might not make sense for everyone um the she was six months old so were you guys it, fighting a lot up to that point or was it just kind I, of it like... had gotten to the point where we just weren't even fighting anymore we okay. were just like going in different directions completely yeah um and we we had been for a while and i think both of us thought parenthood would be a little bit different and have us get on the same page and that just didn't align and it was really the best thing for us because instead of focusing on everything wrong within our relationship we could focus on everything right for our daughter Mm -hmm. and i would say our friendship now has never been better it took a while obviously to get there and yeah and i'm really happy that we're able to have like a healthy co-parenting relationship now he's in a new relationship i really like his new partner uh our families still get along like i feel really fortunate and lucky that this is my dynamic i know it's not everyone's dynamic uh, I would say the separating when you have a child that is six months and breastfeeding is difficult to navigate because, of course, as a mom, like you're breastfeeding every three hours. And yes, you can pump, but, you know, uh, it's it's a difficult time to, to try to co-parent yeah. and try to navigate that. But I would say there is no right time to separate from someone mm-hmm. if that is the right thing for you to do, if you know that's yeah. the best case. Um yeah (laughs) wow yeah because you're doing so much you're studying so much and i'm just like i know cody he's a he seems like a great dad Mm -hmm. i've been around him a few times but i can't imagine he's sitting up and like reading as much about every little thing as you are i'm i'm definitely like you know that that's my role i i and i do it you know for a living yeah all the research and everything so he watches my videos he asks me questions i i feel fortunate that i can you know I'm like, oh, we like this is the path we're going to go. We're going to do this. We're going to have so it's not a battle. Transition. You're like, I want to do yeah, this and like he, this. Please and, do it. And like it's this. very much like he respects me as a mom. Uh, okay. So he, he's like, yeah, uh, whatever you say goes. That's great. Okay. Because I was talking to him at Arrow's birthday, and mm-hmm. uh, I was saying how Parker only whines for me. 
Mm-hmm. Like she won't, she'll be great. And then I come home and she'll be whining. And everyone's like, oh, she wasn't whining the whole time you were, mm-hmm. you were gone. And I was like, and he was like, it's because you give in to her all the time, isn't it? And he, I was he like, he, he, okay, now that, that's like our one little tip we have now. He says like the whole gentle parenting thing, we're, we're trying to get on the same page and he is doing it. He's just definitely. Can like, you describe gentle parenting for the audience? Gentle parenting to me is just parenting with having leading with understanding and empathy Mm -hmm. so it's not passive parenting it's it's making sure that if your child is you know doing something they're not supposed to that you let them know that you understand that they want to do that that they can't do that Mm -hmm. and it's and it's okay and it's safe to have you know sad emotions and allow them to feel it and then you can kind of Give them two other options yeah. to sidetrack them and they'll move on to something mm-hmm. that is safer for them. Yeah. And so it's not, you know, leading with punishment and yelling or... Just constantly saying no. And, yeah. yeah. It's it's more so letting them learn how to navigate their own emotions. Okay. And so when you wanted to do this and at first he wasn't sure... Yeah, I mean, he... he, he thought it was more passive parenting he was like we need more structure we need more more rules and I said this doesn't negate structure and rules it's just having because a lot of times at this age they're 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 feeling like they're misunderstood or Mm -hmm. their their point isn't getting across maybe they're not speaking yet yeah and so it's it's making sure that they understand you understand to make sure they feel heard and to feel safe in their emotions and that they can feel it and that you're not going to get mad at them for crying. They can come to you if mm-hmm. they want, or you can, you know, get them to do something safe with some two other yeah. activities. And, you know, that and having those rules and structure. It's not like if she is in the dishwasher and grabs a knife and I take it away and she freaks out and, you know, I explain to her that the the knife can't be a thing and it's not like I'm giving her the knife. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so. that, that's great that you were able to get on the same page with him about that and mm-hmm. that he is also doing it because then, you know, I mean, I don't know how, what your schedule your split schedule with him mm-hmm. looks like but then she has consistency in her life yeah it's not like well mom lets me do this and dad lets me do this yeah because as yeah. she gets older and smarter and more mm-hmm. mischievous she's gonna be definitely. trying things yeah i can definitely see she's gonna be very very smart and i'm hoping that we're on the same page yeah she doesn't because i already see it with parker and my niece mm-hmm. they will whine for the phone with my mom mm-hmm. but parker will never stand in front of me and be like like pointing for it mm-hmm. you know but because my mom gives it to her I, yeah even though i tell her not to um and so it's like they really already know like what they can get away with with certain yeah. people yeah no and they're like, smart they're very these smart little brats they know what's up <laughs> so now you're co- co-parenting with yes. him you guys are in a really good place he is in another relationship like mm-hmm. how how did you guys decide all the rules for yourself because i i'm assuming you didn't go to like a third party to help you figure out no, no. I mean, I would say, I would say like a little bit of trial and error, but mm-hmm. I would say communication was really key, and then setting up boundaries that we both had for the both of us. So you know, if one of us was dating someone and we felt like it was serious, then the first step we agreed would be to have like, if he was seeing someone, have us meet. So I, I when he was dating his girlfriend, I took her out to lunch. And as long as I liked her and I felt like my daughter would be safe around mm-hmm. her, then we would initially move on to the next step, which was having like a group chill okay. interaction. And was that really weird? Because I mean, taking <laughs> out your ex's new girlfriend after you must be so weird, even though it's like a very mature thing that you have to do for your yeah, kid. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it wasn't the easiest at first, yeah. um, but thankfully she's a really nice girl and so she made it really easy i would say i probably was the difficult one at first i had to mature and you know let go of everything Uh um but yeah i would say probably like six months ago it's been smooth sailing and so now is there any like rules that other people should have with their partner like is she allowed to hang out with arrow when like at any time or so like... this is something we're discussing now okay um because i would be the craziest so... jealous bitch like i'd be like <laughs> no your girlfriend is not allowed allowed around her because i am not mature yet yeah no 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 see i i see it as like 
uh, an asset. Like my one big thing I did tell her is if you are not like 100% about Cody and you're not like 100% about being in my child's life, then I don't want you in her life because mm-hmm. I don't want people in and out of her life. Yeah. And so that was like my my one thing I pushed. Which I think her. is fair. Yeah. Um, and I was like, if you feel like this is a long term thing and you feel like you can be in like this weird co-parenting relationship and Mm -hmm. with my daughter then I'm comfortable with whatever you're comfortable with so if you you know want to watch a movie with her like they they live together now and so they're spending a lot of time together we still haven't gotten to the point where she spends time alone with her um we've been discussing now like what like what is her role like she's like you know I don't feel comfortable taking photos or posting them but you know do is there something she should call me like it's like motherhood co-parenting it's ever changing and yeah. ever growing and so we're still navigating it all the different boundaries yeah. and all the different rules and there's probably like a new thing that comes up mm-hmm. all the time that you'll figure out because her language is going to start developing yeah. a lot more and so she's going to need yeah. to put a name yeah and she's just gonna have questions in general like yes your mommy and your daddy and why you know aren't you together yeah. or other mommies and daddies are together or is deb my mom like sister well like- <laughs> yeah no i know what you're saying so was it hard on your par- both of your parents because i know that your moms are both really involved in arrow's life yeah i would say they they have done a really good job of keeping family family like we still you know use like mother-in-law and like sister-in-law and those type of words we still do like family dinners and Mm -hmm. stuff I would say it was probably harder on Cody's mom just because I think she had fear that I as the mother was gonna keep Arrow away Away. Uh from the family and I you know I had to build up that trust of like no I want her to have family I love you you guys like like relocating close to her right yeah so you guys actually have a good relationship and so I that was a total valid fear she had and uh you know that was something I had to prove to her and now we're at like a really great place and I, I think she knows that I value their relationship and I I love their family and I want Arrow to be a part of it that's great. Yeah, I had a really ugly divorce between my parents, mm-hmm. and it's like the one thing that I'm still angry about my mom for. Just like, why couldn't you guys do this in a civil yeah. way? And yeah. I like, it was so, it was coming for so long. I mean, I remember being like three or four, and my mom tucking me in at night and being like, what if we didn't live with daddy? So it was like an idea back when I was that young, but they didn't separate until mm-hmm. I was like 12. And I so wish that they had just done it and been really civil with each other. Yeah. And so, I don't know if you have any like mom guilt around any of this, but I just want to tell you that in my eyes, you're doing it like the totally right way. And I Thank wish you. that my parents did it this way because I just watched them act like children. Yeah. Um, and it was it was so shitty. <laughs> no, no, that that's that's hard. And I feel like when you become a parent, you kind of realize that like your parents were really just kids figuring it out mm-hmm. as they go. Um, but yeah, my parents got divorced when I was young, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of a different situation for me. I was kind of happy about the divorce. Yeah, I was so happy too. And that's what I'm saying. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, they, they they as well like weren't close. Like we didn't do family dinners or mm-hmm. anything like that. So that's something that from my experience, I knew that I had wanted and that I... So like I, you got ex- estranged from your dad. Or you yes. Saying, say, okay, and you wish that maybe they tried to incorporate him in your life more or... Yeah, I... Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, yes, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of unpack there. Okay. 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 (laughs) Yeah. No, I I mean, I like loved my dad and I was really Mm -hmm. close to him. Um, But then my mom made me feel like I couldn't be close to him. So it was kind of like a competition back and forth. Kind of. Yeah. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, that's a whole, that could be a whole episode. (laughs) Um, I know. Now we're unpacking like our, our I mean, but that's what we're all trying to do, right? Like be better versions of our Mm -hmm. parents and not to like shit on them but just because why not see what was done wrong and try to make it better yeah i think it's a positive thing like you're able to learn from other people's mistakes yeah and i mean we're gonna make mistakes like i'm I'm sure i'm sure i've already made a bunch (laughs) and then one day arrow and parker will grow up and be like well my mom did it like this Mm -hmm. so therefore i'm gonna learn from her and do it like this and i wouldn't 
I hope I wouldn't take it as a diss. Although yeah. I probably will <laughs> because I'm going to be her mom. Um, okay, so are you dating now? Because I know you... Well, you have... know about my bad dating experience. Do you want to tell everyone? I wasn't sure if you're going to want to talk about it. Cause... <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I put it out there. I was dating this guy I met on a dating app. And this is the first guy you're dating after your ex. I went on two first dates that were really bad Okay. Uh, before him. Um, just very awkward dates. And... So when I met him, we connected really well off the bat. The, everything seemed to really align. He seemed to be on the same page as me. And sh- long story short, it ended up being just a complete like narcissist manipulative situation. He was probably looking at my channel, telling me what I wanted to hear. Oh, wow. And it got to the point where he was like going through... I wasn't allowed to say in the video I made, but I've been told I can say it now. So he was going through a divorce as well and he had given me this big sob story that she had taken all the money and that they had business together and now he was like almost homeless and so he was like i once this divorce is final like i'll get part of the business and i can pay you back and my family's in switzerland and it takes time to ship the money like the wire the money overseas and he started borrowing small amounts of money to large amounts of money for this like lawyer fees and through that and he also like didn't want to be on my social media he didn't want me to take any pictures with him scammer yeah and at that time i was like that makes sense i thought it was you when you weren't posting his face i thought like you weren't ready to share him on your yeah i would say at first yeah and then it kind of grew into a lot of conversations of like because i was like you know i get it my job is weird you, it, it might take a while for someone to want to be seen publicly and so I was gracious about that but then it started to become a red flag when he like didn't even want me to follow his TikTok because he didn't want anyone to see I was following him what? and yeah or liking his TikToks or watching his TikToks and this was all happening because he was dating multiple women scamming multiple women there have now been 12 women to come forward and that he was taking money from not he wasn't taking my, each girl he, he was giving a different story some women he was saying he was a famous actor and his parents were a famous actor and he was rich and that he wanted to spoil them some people he was giving a sob story some people he was telling some bit of the truth and some not um he was saying that he was living with a roommate and that the roommate was awful and it was a horrible situation and he wanted to live with he was because at one point he lost his place and he was staying with me he would come after work but like after my daughter was asleep stay at my place and leave before she would wake up and i was just trying to help him out and so he was trying to and you were falling from him for him yeah you guys had like a created a bond yeah i would say like the first you know three four months of relationship it was great he was writing me like poems and books and sending me playlists and um he met cody they went out to lunch and that was a great step in you know what i thought was a positive move forward um he met my family he met cody's family and then eventually yeah he met my daughter after all of the steps were taken and uh yeah it just ended up being a really bad first relationship after (laughs) I know. I'm just, God. Like, But the good news is I've been talking to his ex-wife and with all of the evidence I've been able to gather from this these other women, she's been able to get a restraining order against him because what he's been doing to her has been a lot worse. And on August 4th, it will become permanent. And then I think they're going into a more, there's more even there on her end she's going to pursue legally. Oh, wow. So, but I'm I'm thankful that even now I have girls coming forward googling his name after they meet him on some dating app and finding my video and saying thank that you is so really, much that is really really great yeah for you know because I honestly see this. I see you as someone online who's like very proper just sharing <laughs> like you know you had this breakup with Cody that I'm sure had a lot more drama behind it and you just weren't sharing it you know mm-hmm. you were like acknowledging that some things should not be on the internet yeah. and then here you are I was like sitting on my uh, phone like looking at your story and reading everything that you're posting about this guy and I'm like I cannot believe that she's sharing all this tea I know but, like it's so really, not like it's, me, it's not like you but, but I, it's for I, a good cause yes I knew it was something so much bigger and I knew that 
it was going to help other women, maybe not thousands of women, but 12 women is substantial. Yeah. And because that's what it, he's doing all day. He's like yeah. trying to find and, girls and he, to do this too. And he's too. still out there. And um, my video still lives. And I hope that it's called the TikTok Swindler. If you guys yeah, want to see TikTok it on her Swindler. channel, I think it's a great name. Did you get your money back? I did get my money back wow. because I had a social security card and I told him I wasn't going to get it back until I got my money back. And he was saying this whole time he couldn't pay me back because of, I, this sounds like the, the, what's that documentary with the, the Tinder swindler. No, not that. The other one. There's the, another one. There was a few Anna of them. Anna Delvey. Anna Delvey. Oh, and, okay. you know, she's like, the, the, the money's from overseas. And, like, he kept giving me, like, like some, that. Something. And then the, the second I came forward with all this evidence, and I was like, I need my money back. I have your social security card. You can pay me back whenever. I, like, won't throw this away. He came, he came that day and gave me all my money back. Wow. So I think he was, like, he just saving won. money. I think he had it. Did, I, he, did with, he watch your video? I have not spoken to him since, but I'm sure he has. Oh my. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I would love to have been a fly on the wall to watch his reaction to him getting everything he deserved, mm-hmm. aka being exposed on your platforms because he fucked with the wrong girl. Yes, oh. yes. And yes. And then you took some time off the, from social media after that, right? Like, that must have been really hard just yeah, I think being I, lied to like that. I think I took a, a week or two from posting, which, I mean, I even posted every week after birth. So it's substantial. Yeah, I took some time to be with family. And luckily, everyone was really supportive. Uh, My daughter's father was supportive. His family was supportive, which I'm, you know, it could have went totally the opposite direction. But everyone was like, fuck this guy. (laughs) That's great. No, yeah, because it would have sucked if someone tried to make you feel like how you should yeah. have known or like I mean and that's scary. You how do you know? Like you cannot yeah. really know. All all of them were like like Cody was like he duped me. Like this yeah. guy like I like he's like I you know, I puffed up the first time I met him and like, you know, I told him how it is and and then we bonded and and he allowed himself to involve a child in this. Yeah. And like the nerve of this guy and he definitely was angry at him, but he was not angry at me, which I'm it's Lucky. really great that you made that YouTube video because you are doing like what Netflix did with the t- with the Tinder yeah. Swindler because that yeah. guy's still out there too. Yeah. But now he can't release scam girls no, because I, because Netflix made I a whole saw thing him about on him. Hinge. I saw him on Hinge. No, yeah. Ugh, now he's like an influencer, so that's kind of annoying. Yeah, because he's. Ugh. He's yeah, always... he's getting, like, club appearances in L.A. and stuff. I hate it's this. Just... I hate this world. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, can we not celebrate the awful people? Can we celebrate the good people for once? There are so many. I, I, I feel like I was watching another documentary with Adam the other day, and I can't remember what it was called, but it was like, I was like, wait, I feel like there's going to be another Tinder Swindler story. And mm-hmm. there's too many assholes out there, and there's too many nice women out there, but it's like, you yeah. want to be nice. You don't want to keep like, I, yeah, assuming I don't wanna... every guy is going to be a sociopath. Yeah, I don't want to be jaded from my yeah. previous experiences and, you know, push this on the other guys. But, like, yeah, now I'm more careful, definitely. So are you are you dating right now? Or are you, like, on the market? Or are you still taking, like, a break? I'm kind of like, well, I have needs. So I have, like, friends with benefits at this point with okay. people, like, I trust. But um, I've been on, like, a couple dates. But I want to take things very, very, very slow. And I'm looking for a lot of flags. Any flags. It would be nice if you could have like dating references. I know. I was thinking like <laughs> a Yelp. A Yelp. I've, I've, I've thought like, why doesn't that exist? Like a Yelp for guys. It would be so nice. Mm-hmm. Guys, just don't be assholes so that we can trust you. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's actually like a Black Mirror episode. I don't know if you guys watch that show, but Is it? everyone walks around and there's like a rating oh, yeah, above yeah, their yeah. head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like what type of person they are. I mean, I'm not, ag- I'm not against it. <laughs> I'm not against it for maybe dating, especially if you have a child involved. Yeah, it's totally different. It's totally it's different. Fun. It's hard to date when you have a child because you only have so much free time, especially if you're working and yeah. you're already so tired. It's like, how do you give your energy and it's to like, somebody new? And you've gone through a divorce, so it's like you you want to only just be with people who are like serious about you and yeah it's like i don't that i i honestly i think this a lot and i don't know if i would actually feel it if it was happening but i feel like if me and adam separated i would just like not date because i'm just too afraid of people yeah. like especially I, now, I mean but... i was definitely there for like the first year mm-hmm. after the divorce like i was like i well, I mean, I was still breastfeeding at that time. And I was like, I'm not going to shoot milk in some guy's face that I don't they know. They might like it. <laughs> I you never know. And that, I'm always scared of, like, finding someone with, like, a like a mommy fetish. 
I feel like a lot of guys have body, mommy fetishes. I feel like it's a really yeah. big thing right now. Yeah. Okay, That this leads me to what I want to ask you. Okay. Did you know that I did porn when I followed you? Yeah. Okay. I, did. I have, like, such a phobia of, like, no one wanting to be Parker's friend because the moms aren't going to like me and not oh, want to no. hang out with me. So I was like, oh, she probably doesn't know. So that's cool. Like, I could just be her friend and then I'll make her like me. And then <laughs> and after, then I'll drop the ball. No, I'm like, no, by no. the way, I do porn. You already <laughs> like me. You can't care. <laughs> no 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 i totally know are you worried like moving forward that it might create judgment that isn't just because you're an amazing mom like no you really are thank you i'm trying uh i so i like fell into porn and so i didn't make the decision of like having a stage name which if i did it would be lena lovegood uh but i (laughs) did not make that decision i just like kept my real name and I wish that at the time I had changed my name only because I'm assuming when you apply to private schools, they look up your parents and I don't want Parker to not be admitted to a school because of my career choice. Are they allowed to do, do, do that legally? I don't know, but I feel like they might. I've even had that fear of just like being a YouTuber. Mom bloggers sharing- a totally respectable job. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You do think you get shame from people just thinking it's a like weird thing to do? Yeah, just you know, just like oh, you know, people can say like oh, it's selfish or it's um, that w- child's privacy and and I oh, I feel I mean, like I try to balance that as best as I can. Yeah, and you know, it's always something I'm trying to navigate in the healthiest way possible. But and I think I do a good job of it. Yeah. But. I mean, your social I, media is about being a mom, but it's it's a it's you. It's like yeah, I wouldn't I, consider it like a family vlog channel. Yeah, it's, which I still think there's a lot of great family vloggers out there, but I do think that they get a lot of hate. I would say my content is more like parenthood, motherhood based, but my daughter is shown on there, and I I have worried of like I like I I don't want this to you know affect her getting into a school because obviously they Google me, yeah, they find my stuff, and so I've even had this same fear. Yeah, I definitely. That's like the one thing I worry about, and then I worry about like, are the moms not going to want their kids to come over to my house because of a job I have? Even if I retired, like let's say years, a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know because so. the world is constantly in LA, changing, too. and I feel like if you were in a different state, maybe this might yeah. be more of an issue. But in LA, like, there's all kinds of people. Yeah, it's true. With uh, all kinds of jobs. Yeah, and it's like your job is, our jobs are, I guess, newer in a sense because they're mm-hmm. social media based, but I think it will be just a lot more common. Do you yeah. say that you're a YouTuber when you go to like the dentist or something or do you say something else? I say I do video editing and graphic design. See, that is nice. I, I should come up with like a good <laughs> lie like that. That's, that's what I tell any anyone and it's mostly just because I got a little tired of having the Explain. conversation and the questions that get asked. You when can you make say money from YouTuber. YouTube. How do you, yeah. you do that full time? What's your real job? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. Mm-hmm. It's just annoying to explain. I would tell like a, a 21 year old if they asked me because they probably understand. But like yeah, telling a dentist or you're an older person. What, what, like, what do you say? Um, I say I work in social media and then. I, I hope that that shuts people up, but a lot of times they do ask follow-up question, cause, questions because now everybody has social media. Yeah, I feel like that so they would all want, ensue like, a lot of follow-up questions. Advice. They're like, well, well, what do you think I should do with my Instagram? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, just clean my teeth, please. Yeah. Um, is your family, like, totally on board with you sharing everything online, or was it weird yeah. for them? No, no. I mean, my mom is very so much, like, a loud, outspoken person. Like, I remember... She had a blog probably in like, twen- no, 19, 20, 1997 about... Your mom is cutting edge. She was yeah, on it. Yeah, it was a blog. And at the time she had cancer and so she was smoking weed. And so she made a blog about her like journey about smoking weed when you have cancer. And she had like a whole little list of things to tell people that were like little jokes little snide remarks of like like uh things to say if you're smoking weed and someone has a problem with it and you have cancer and one of her things it was so funny it was like uh just tell them that oh yeah if i get too high i'll just remind myself that i have cancer wow (laughs) so she's like that kind of like she's very open she's like you know she was ahead of her time she yeah you know worked in the silicon valley she's on social media herself she 
is it round is my biggest fan she loves what i round lady round round lady lady. (laughs) yeah i i've learned her i'm not gonna lie you guys are so cute i mean i i love seeing you when you go to her house for the weekend Mm -hmm. she has like a farm farm she has a donkey burrows and now a bunch of goats I, I always get so jealous. I'm like, I'm going to crash the You house. have to come up to the farm. I would totally come to the farm. It looks like so much fun. And it's always nice when you go there because I feel mm-hmm. like it must be hard for you to get photos with Arrow when you're just yes, with Arrow. I, and then they get to take a bunch of pictures of you. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a little hard to have someone like over the age of 60 take a good Instagram photo. It's very true. <laughs> so it can be a little bit of a experience. But I think I've trained them now well. So it's nice to, yeah, have someone else as a single mom take a photo of you. And they do all the cooking when I'm there. You look like you eat good when you go there because their food does look really delicious. It's so good. They're pescatarian, so everything's like seafood fish related. But it is delicious. It is five stars, and I don't have to do the cooking. And I I honestly don't do the cleaning because I get Arrow right into the bath afterwards because she's usually Usually covered in food. And so I have like a good excuse. I'm like, oh, I'll help after. And they're like, no, we got it. So when you have that free time because you're, you know, it's always nice when there's grandparents or aunties Mm -hmm. or someone around because you're like, holy shit, I could binge TikTok on my phone if I want. Yeah. I could totally just be like a nothing person. Mm -hmm. What do you choose to do? I, okay, well, when I'm there, like my daughter loves them but if i leave the room she wants to follow me oh. and so what i usually have to do to actually get a break when i'm there is i'm like oh i have to use the bathroom and i go in there and i sit on the toilet i don't even have to go and i just scroll tiktok and take like a little break and finally after like 15 minutes my mom will knock on the door and she'll be like are you okay do you like, need anything yes, i'm fine <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> at one point i even brought like a blanket in there and like locked the door and laid down and i was like i just need a moment oh it's just God. so much it's just overstimulating yeah. it is very overstimulating overstimulating and I couldn't imagine having another kid because then how do you tell one kid no because you have to take care of the other one I don't know I mean I feel like with anything in parenthood like you just you figure it out figure it out I don't I don't I don't have a clue I I look at these people that have two under two and I'm just like so my sister is nursing her newborn and then her daughter that is like one and a half she's still kind of nursing but she mostly wants she does it to me too put the pacifier in her mouth so she mm-hmm. can't actually drink she'll pull your top down and just flick your nipple that is what she wants she'll be watching that tv so and just sucking on the pacifier and then my sister's nursing on the other side <laughs> and i'm like why is she doing oh this oh my gosh that is so funny they just don't want you to have your own space yeah no your that's space, their one no. rule mm-hmm. you do not matter they are the what mm-hmm. matters um i'm still nursing parker and i honestly don't know when i'm gonna stop because mm-hmm she is like the dictator in my house and if i told her no i feel like she will just i feel like i'll break her heart because she truly does yeah. love nursing so much like i know that at this age 20 months most moms are probably nursing like before nap and before bed mm-hmm. i am just nursing whenever she just, wants like, which is near constant it's like every time yeah. i leave the room and come back in her brain it's like oh mom was gone even if it was just for a second mm-hmm. so then she has to ask for milk again yeah I think it, it, I think you'll probably just get to that point naturally where it'll it'll probably be really hard for you too where she becomes uninterested. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think for a long time I was so worried about like losing cuddles from her because she's not mm-hmm. like super affectionate. Like she's just now starting to hug, but it's mostly after she hits me. <laughs> she like hit me yeah, and I'll and turn my eyes hug. and then she'll come and give me a sour patch kid. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So but I don't know. With you, you said that when you stopped nursing Arrow, she kind of like yeah was more cuddly, yeah, I right? Yeah, I told you this. Yeah. Is, I noticed a big change. I don't know if it just happened at like the right time, but I would say she was not cuddly. She didn't, you know, like to do that, be kind of close. And it always broke my heart. And when I stopped breastfeeding, I was so sad because that was the only time really like we cuddled. And when I stopped, when I weaned her, cuddly baby. It's amazing. I wonder if other women have had this I don't experience. Know. You guys will have I'm to curious. let us know yeah. because I'm, I, I feel like if I knew that this would happen with Parker, that I would cut breastfeeding yeah. a lot earlier just so I can get her cuddles. Yeah, I mean, I feel like either way, like you're not gonna lose that bond whenever yeah. you decide to end your journey. Like she, she'll, she'll get to the cuddle phase. I'm still her favorite, but she like lately has been asking for adam for things mm. and i i really love it one because i get a break and two just because it's like really cute to see them yeah. bond together she's like yeah da, da. and i'm like oh that's so sweet that's so cute that's okay so sweet. i think we're running out of time monica's telling me so i'm just going to ask you one more question okay 
Um, what is the thing that you get the most mom guilt about and how do you combat it or make yourself feel better? Uh, I would say the mom guilt hits me the most in my personal situation with co-parenting. Uh, just the fact that she, you know, she'll go now and spend a weekend at her dad's. And I, I know all in all that she's safe and happy there and having a good time and it's a beautiful thing and I shouldn't be worried mm -hmm. or feel bad, but do you check in a lot or you just kind of like let go? I, do, I look on the baby camera and we send a oh. lot of photos back and okay, forth. Okay. Um, but you can't help but feel guilty when you're totally alone after like a full week of like, go, 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 go. Yeah. It's that like alone time in which I'm like, did, well, did I do enough this week? Did, did, mm. uh, you can't even enjoy am I, your yeah, alone am, am I time. helping her enough? Uh, should I, should I go pop in and do dinner at her dad? Should I, should I, you know, and, and I want to make sure that I'm giving them enough time to bond because that's so important and she loves her dad and he yeah. loves her, but it's weird. You feel guilty all the time i feel like there's no, no way to escape it it's really really <laughs> annoying like even i don't know, even if i have her and i go take a shower i feel guilty because i'm like oh i i should be working right now i don't really need to shower it's only been four days it's, that's so <laughs> fucked up that's such a <laughs> fucked up thought and we should not be allowed to have those thoughts yeah you should be able to shower because mm -hmm. and i try to think about adam i'm like does he feel guilty for taking a have long you, shower have you asked him no, but I know the answer is no. I don't need to ask him. I know that he doesn't feel guilty about yeah, taking what, a shower because it's a natural, that? normal thing for a human to do. And yeah. so I feel like maybe that is the medicine. Just thinking about what someone else as a friend would say to you because yeah. we're always the meanest to ourselves. But if your it's friend true. was like, I feel guilty that I take a shower when my toddler is around and wants to play, mm -hmm. you would be like, no, go take a fucking shower. Yeah. So maybe that's what we should do is talk to ourselves like friends. We should. We should. I'm going to practice this tonight. That's like, actually a really good idea. When I'm feeling tons of mom that. guilt. <laughs> okay, well, this was really fun. And I feel like we had a lot of fun. And I'll probably have you back again at some point. Because I, would I feel love like that. we could talk about a million things about our kids. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you want to say? You want to plug your YouTube? Oh, yeah. I guess uh, if you want to hear more mom content, you can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just Brittany Balin. Maybe linked down below. Yes, or somewhere linked down below. around here. I'm on Instagram, too. It's backwards Baylin Brittany because I got hacked like 10 years and ago and I hope you guys enjoyed this let me yeah. know if you have any mom questions they've been really wanting a mom episode everyone oh, everyone else I've had on um I had one person who was also a mom but mm -hmm. it was mostly been like people in the adult industry so yeah. I hope you're not um you know scared of being on this podcast I, because I am it's not scared <laughs> so far technically a foreign podcast but um yeah this is a lot of fun thank you so much thanks for watching guys and uh yeah like comment subscribe have a good day on purpose Bye. Bye.